Hello, P6 learners. Welcome back to another lesson. My name is Mr. Mugisha Emmanuel, and I'm going to take you through mathematics. In our previous lesson, I taught you how to share given quantities in ratios. And I told you that when you are sharing numbers using ratios, you are supposed to, first of all, get what we call the total ratio. The total ratio. For example, if we are told to share 60,000 in the ratio of 3 to 7, we are going to get the total ratio by adding these ratios. So it is 3 plus 7, which will give you 10. And I told you, you are supposed now to find out how many shares are you going to have. Shares are determined by the number of ratios given. So we have one, two. So we have two shares. So we shall have the first share. And the first share has three. But out of the total share, the total share, which is 10, then times the amount which they are going to share, that is 60,000 shillings. This zero will go with that. It means I have remained with three out of one. And any number divided by one is that number. So we have three times 6,000. 6, so we multiply three times 6,000. I told you you first multiply these two. Three times six, we are getting 18. Then we add on one, two, three zeros. So it means in the first share, we have 18,000. We get the second share. And in the second share, we have seven. Out of the total, which is 10, then we multiply by the amount of money which they are sharing, and that is 60,000 shillings. So we are canceling a zero and a zero. We have seven times 6,000. So seven times six, we are getting 42. We are getting 42, then plus three zeros. So it means after sharing my number, the first share would have 18,000. The second share would have 42,000. And I told you that if you want to prove that your answer is right, when you add this to this, you must get the money you have been sharing. We have another one whereby we have Silver, Betty, and Viola shared 48,000 shillings in the ratio of 1 to 3 to 2, respectively. I told you that when I say respectively, it means the way I have arranged these ratios is the way the names are arranged. Therefore, Silver has one, Betty has three, Viola has two. So, can we go ahead and answer the question, how much did each get? Step one, we get the total ratio. And the total ratio here, we are going to add 1 plus 3 plus 2. 1 plus 3, we are getting 4. 4 plus 2, we are getting 6. Okay? So, what are we sharing? 48,000, but among these three people. So, the first one is silver. So silver has how many parts? First name, first ratio, one. Out of the total ratio, six times. How much money are they sharing? They are sharing 48,000 shillings. So we shall have by six, one. By six, we are getting eight. So we shall have one times 8,000. And this one is going to give you 8,000 shillings. Huh? How much did each get? We have now Betty. So for Betty, has the second ratio, which is three, 
out of the total ratio, which is six, then we multiply by the money they are sharing, 48,000. So by six, one, six, that is eight, plus these zeros. Therefore, we shall have three times 8,000 shillings. Three times eight, we are getting 24,000. 24, then plus these three zeros, which is 24,000. And finally, we have Viola, the third name. So the third ratio is two. So Viola got two out of the total ratio, which is six times uh, 48,000 shillings. So by six, one, 48 divided by six, we are getting eight, plus how many zeros? Three zeros. So we have two times 8,000 shillings. Eight times two, we are getting 16. Then plus how many zeros? One, two, three zeros. So in this case, we will find that after sharing, Silva has this, Viola has this one, Betty has that one. That's what we basically looked at in our previous lesson. So in our lesson today, we are going to find the number which was shared. In other words, I am going to give you what one person got, and I want you to get that number which was shared. And in our example, number one. The ratio of boys to girls is three to five. The ratio of boys to girls is three to five. Okay? If there are 15 boys, so this 15 belongs to boys. There are 15 boys. There are 15 boys. So for girls, we don't have. And I want you to get the total number of pupils. If we had the number of girls, we would just get boys plus girls and get the total, but we don't have this. So what do we do? We are going to get the total ratio. The total ratio. So the total ratio we are going to add, three, plus five, which will give you eight. So the total ratio is eight. Now, since I have been given the ratio of boys and the number of boys, my concentration is going to be on this one. I'm not going to concentrate on this because I don't have the corresponding number there. So I'm going to use this one. So the ratio parts are three out of the total, which is eight, times a certain number, which is the total, in order to get 15. So what do we do? We are going to say, let the total be maybe n. So since we are using boys, boys, we have three, a ratio for boys, 15, the number of boys, we are going to get three, out of the total ratio, which is eight, times the total, which I don't know. And when I do that, since I have used ratio parts of boys, then I will get number of boys. And how many boys do I have? 15. Okay? Go ahead from your equation and solve. So what is this one going to give us? 3 times n, we shall get 3n out of 8. And this one will give you 15. Okay? In P5, you learned how to solve these equations. If you have 3n out of 8 is equal to 15, what do you do? You first remove this one. And how do we remove this one? By multiplying it on both sides. So we shall have 8 times 3n out of 8 is equal to 15, you also multiply by 8. I've said 
multiply this side by 8, even this side by 8. So this 8 will go with this one. It means on this side I have 3n. Then you multiply here. 15 times 8, what do we get? 15 times 8, what do we get? So we shall have 15 times 8. What are we going to get? 8 times 5, we shall get 40. So I write a 0, then I carry a 4. 8 times 1, we are getting 8, plus this 4, which will give you 12. So we are getting 120. Okay? So if you have 3n is equal to 120, what do you do? You are going to divide each side by 3 to get the value of n. So 3n divided by 3 is equal to 120 divided by 3. Reduce, divide by 3, 1, divide by 3, 1. 3 by 3 is 1. 12 divided by 3, we are getting a 4. Then 0 divided by 3, we are getting a 0. Therefore, n is equal to 40. But the question says, find the total number of pupils. Therefore, there are 40 pupils. There are 40 pupils. Let's look at another example. We are saying Peter Emma and John shared some money in the ratio of three to two to five, respectively. If John got 20,000 shillings, the first question, How much money did they share all together? Okay. Peter, Emma, and John shared some money. The amount of money is not known. In the ratio of 3 to 2 to 5, respectively. If John got 20,000 shillings, how much money did they share all together? So we have been given what John got after sharing. So we are going to have Peter. Then we have Emma. Then we have John. Okay? Their corresponding ratios are, the first name is Peter, which goes for three. Emma, two. John, five. Okay? Yes. And John got 20,000 shillings. So you look for John. Where do we have John? John is here. So John got 20,000 shillings. So it means we don't have what this one got. We don't have what this one got. And we have been told to find how much money they shared all together. So we are going to get total ratio. And the total ratio is going to give us 3 plus 2 plus 5. And this one will give you 3 plus 2, 5. 5 plus 5, 10. Okay? So since we don't have the total which they shared, but we have what John got, 
it means my concentration is going to be on what John got. Okay? So, we are going to say, let the total be T. Let the total be T. So, John, my concentration is on John because we have what he got. John got 5 out of the total ratio, which is 10, times the total, which I'm looking for. And this one will give me whose share? John's share, which is 20,000. Someone there is going to ask me, teacher, why have you not used the three? Because the three doesn't have the number here. We have not used the two because two doesn't have the number here. So we are using John's share to find the total. Therefore, having formed that equation, having formed that equation that 5 out of 10 times the total which I don't know is going to give me 20,000. Then we can further simplify this. 5 times t, what do we get? We shall get 5t out of 10. And this one will give us 20,000. Do you remember when we, what we did when we reached this stage? I told you, first remove this 10. So since it is divided by 10, we are going to multiply by 10 to eliminate that 10. So we shall have 10 times 5t out of 10, which is equal to 20,000 shillings times 10. Multiply by 10, multiply by 10. Why? I want to eliminate this 10. So this one will go. I remain with 5t, which is equal to, when I multiply this, I'm going to get 200,000. Okay? So if I want to get the value of t, what do we do? It means I'm going to divide each side by 5. So we shall have 5t out of 5 is equal to 200,000 divided by 5. So by 5 is 1. By 5 is 1, by 5 is 1. So we are dividing. 20 divided by 5, we get a 4. 0 divided by 5, 0. 0 by 5, 0. 0 by 5, 0. And 0 by 5, 0. So we are getting T, which is equal to 40,000 shillings. So for this matter, there are 4. It means the amount of money which these three people shared was 40,000 shillings. They shared 40,000 shillings. So if I add on part B, then I say, how much did, I can choose one person here, how much did Peter get. How much money did Peter get? So since we have now the total, I think things are now very easy. We know that Peter has three. Out of the total ratio, which is ten. Ten times, how much money are they sharing? They are sharing 40,000 shillings. So times 40,000. We are cancelling this and that. So we shall have 3 times 4,000. And this one is going to give you 12,000 shillings. So it means Peter got 12,000 shillings. Assuming I say how much money did Emma get, it means you are going to get 2 out of the total times the total which they are supposed to share, which is 40,000. Then you will get how much money Emma got. Let me have another example. Let's have another example. Let's have another example. Example three. Okero 
and appeal shared a certain amount of money in the ratio of three to one respectively. Respectively. So I'm asking how my how much money did they share all together if you just choose one of them I can decide to choose maybe appeal so if appeal got Seventy thousand shillings. How much money did they share all together if a peer got seventy thousand shillings? You see? Okay. A okero and a peer shared a certain amount of money, a certain amount of money. We don't know that amount. A certain amount of money in the ratio of three to one respectively. How much money did they share all together if a PO got 70,000 shillings? So we have Okero, then we have a PO. Mm -hmm. Respectively means the way I have arranged ratios is the same way names are arranged. So it means Okero goes for three, then a PO goes for one. So of these two, whose share has been given? The answer is here. If a PO got 70,000 shillings, so it means this money is for a PO. So I put it under a PO. So a PO here has 70,000 shillings. What about Okero? Okero, we don't know. Okero, we don't know. Therefore, to get the total amount of money which they shared, we are going to first of all get the total ratio. So the total ratio has 3 plus 1, which is 4. Do we know the total which they shared? No. So we say, let the total amount be Maybe K. Okay. So where am I going to concentrate? Am I going to concentrate on Okero? No. Because I don't have Okero's share. What about appeal? We have the ratio and the amount. So it means my concentration is going to be on appeal. So appeal has one out of the total ratio, which is four times the total which they are supposed to share. And I have assumed it to be K. And this one will give me a PO's share, and a PO's share is 70,000 shillings. Therefore, what is that one going to give me? Go ahead and simplify. One times K, what do we get? We shall get one K. But out of four. And this one is going to give you 70,000 shillings. So I have told you, after forming this equation, eliminate this four. We have been dividing here by four. So to eliminate this four, you multiply each side by four. So we have four times k, one k out of four, which is equal to 70,000. Then again, multiplied by, multiplied by 4 times 4. Then this one will cancel with that. 
I remain with one K, which is mathematically written as K, which will give us four times this one, we are getting 28, then plus how many zeros? Four zeros, that is 280,000 shillings. There are four. It means when I give you what one person got, and I want you to get the total, still, we follow the same procedures as you have seen in example number one, number two, up to example number three. Thank you so much for being good learners. I'm going to give you an activity. I don't give you too much work because you know you have, you have to spare some time to wash your hands, to sanitize. So I'm going to give you only 10 numbers which you are going to try from home. And the next time when I come, we shall first go through some of those numbers before I teach you a new lesson. Thank you so much for being good runners. Bye-bye.